Good morning on Zoom. I hope it's clear for you too. This morning I'd like to share just very briefly. I'm not too well myself, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll do what I can. But while I was thinking during the week, you know, what to share and how to bless people who are here, to encourage, to strengthen. And all of a sudden, I saw this on the, on the, on the wall. And I thought, well, why not? It's true. Jesus is the answer. And when you look at the whole world, it's, it's all wrecked and ruined. Because they don't have the answer. Everyone's looking for an answer, to be honest. But they're not looking in the right places. They don't know where the answer lies. So they try to discover the answer. They go from one place to the other and never can find the answer. So I was thinking and, and pondering in my thoughts while I was sleeping even at night, you know. How can I put this? Because He is the answer. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, He is still the answer. And that is a great thing. So He's the answer not only now, not only before, not only ahead. He is the answer in the past, in the present, and in the future. And that's what it counts. You know why? Because He's all-powerful. He is God. That's why. So look, let's look at it in the past. Jesus, the answer in the past. What's in the past? Creation, Garden of Eden, sin. Those are all in the past. So when we talk about DNA today, you know, we're very from the all oh, go and test your DNA, blah blah blah. Why? Because you know it, it, it carries the genetic information. That's what DNA does. I looked up what DNA stands for, I couldn't pronounce it. Deoxy, binox, cleox, something, I don't know. But those are the terms. But what it does is carry is the it carries the genetic information. So if we were to bring all our blood in a bowl, you know, taken out like you go to the surgery to take blood out in tubes or whatever, and you test it back right through back to the Garden of Eden, it will be matching with Adam's blood. Because we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We came through Adam. The first Adam. That's why when you look at the past, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our blood has been stained and been corrupted by the blood of Adam. When you look back hindsight, it's the truth. You know, if scientists can go back right through six, seven thousand, eight thousand years, nine thousand, or even twelve thousand, don't talk about millions. This world is not millions, by the way. All wild guess. Carbon dating even don't talk about millions. So, what I'm trying to say here is, in the past, our blood was corrupted, stained, which is passed down through mankind, which results in rebellion and bad behavior. You know, when we, when we look at all these kids that are behaving badly, you know, when, when you look at the genetics, it, it, it links. It links because of the DNA. And when you look at all of that, that's why we need somebody to clean or cleanse all our corrupt stained blood, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. So he is the answer in the past, because only through his blood we can be cleansed. Why? Because he has no sin. That's why he has no sin. So our sin-stained blood can be cleansed by the sinless blood when we receive him, when he died on the cross for all of us. That is a great thing. That's great news because he died not only for us who is seated here, he died for the whole world out there who doesn't know him. That's the bonus. Everyone who comes to him and accepts him will be got rid of all the stained, corrupt blood and made pure by the blood of Christ. And then what happens? 
we become a new creation. That's who we are, new creation. And we today have accepted Christ, have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, so our DNA is the DNA of the second Adam. Not the first Adam, the second Adam. So when we look at it, he is the answer. No other gods or gods, small g gods or religious men that have actually practiced religion and given religion to the world can actually do that. Because their blood is not innocent. Their blood is stained and corrupted. So they can't save or they can't clean or cleanse any other blood. And that is important to know. Because, you know, people are searching for answers. They go to this God, they go to that God, they go to the other God, they go to this religion, that religion, every religion in the world, but they can't get the answer. Because no other religion, no other religious leader can do what Jesus did. Why? Because they're not God. Jesus is God. God incarnate as man. He came to the, into the world as a man. And his blood is sinless. That is the past. What great gift he gave. What God gave through his son to the world. To cleanse our blood. And make it pure. To become a new creation. That's the past. What about the present? I'm talking about the past. You look back history, you go back years and years and years and what record, you know, history records a lot of things. And they are all facts, by the way. All facts. Geologists, they found facts of what the Bible describes and declare. And scientists found facts about what the Bible is declaring. So you can't discard this. If you have a brain, if you are smart, if you have a uh, you know, a mind to think, you can think back and say, well, that's right. Why are we, why, are, why is the world listening to all the lies that people who think they are smart are actually telling? <coughs> all lies. They themselves don't know it. But we have proof. That's been dated, recorded, and has been given through the Word of God. Alright, let's look at the present. He's the answer to our every need. If I call you up here and ask you what God has done for you in your life, which is significant, you can all share what God has done for you. That's present. Because He's alive. He's not dead. He's the only God that became alive after the crucifixion. No other religious man raised from the dead. Only Jesus. That's important to know. So, when we look, let's look at some scriptures here. Examples. First of all, let's look at a man at the pool of Bethesda. In, in, in actually, in John 5. Let me read this to you. In John 5. You know, you know the story at the pool of Bethesda. The angel comes and stirs the water up. And all the lame, the blind, the deaf, all the crippled, they are all there to jump in into the pool and they get healed. So when, when the angel comes and stirs the water up, everyone who, who gets in first gets healed. But this lame man is there laying, you know, lying in a bed and he's waiting for his chance to just roll in, but he never get a chance to get in. So he never got healed. And, you know, he's probably frustrated. So, in, 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 in John 5, chapter 5, verse 1 to 5, it says here, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep, sheep gate, a pool, which is called, in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, 
He said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. And that's the scene here. You know, so poor man, infirm for 38 years, and he can't get into the water because he's laid on his bed. What I'm trying to picture you here is, the water is stirred by an angel, and whoever gets in first gets healed. But you know, this man seeing all the healing, all the stirring, all, all what is going on, but yet, the answer in his life is not that. It's Jesus. It's Jesus, and he didn't know that. Until he told Jesus, I can't get into the water, Jesus. So what did Jesus say here? Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And on that day he was made well. So what I'm trying to say here is, even though all this havoc and commotion is going on, because of the stirring of the water and people get healed, but nobody looked at Jesus. Who is the answer there and then? Except he, this man who met Jesus. So when you look at it, it's not the stirring of the water, it's not the angel that comes down, it's not the healing that takes part, it's the answer that lies is in Jesus. So this man, you know, regretfully, hoping and thinking he can't make it, who met Jesus, got the answer. Rise up and walk. This is present 2,000 years ago. The past is great. The answer is still Jesus. The present, still Jesus. Let me, let me read you another, another incident here. The woman with a blood issue for 12 years. 12 years. Quite a number of years. 12 years. In Luke chapter 8, in 43, verse 43, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. This is the problem. Today, a lot of people are running around like headless chicken to find the answer spending so much money for this and that and the other, but they never stop to wonder and think, there's a great healer who is Jesus. This is what the world is like. Same with this woman, issue of blood for 12 years. She spent so much money trying to go to the physicians to get treated. And they treated her, but she never got cured. Never got cured. You know, this is, this is the mentality of, of people in the world today. You try your best, whatever you can. If you can't, then go to monastery or church or whatever, try religion. This is how it is. You know, the, the philosophy of mankind is when you are young, you play. When you are teenage, you study and you learn hard. And when you have a degree or whatever, find money. And only when you are 70 years plus, seek religion. That's the philosophy of the world. Nobody understands that you could die as a teenager or you could die as a young adult. But they only seek religion when they are 70 plus. Oh, I'm getting old now, I'm going to die, I might as well have a religion. That's the philosophy of the world. But here, it doesn't matter whether you're 3 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old, 40, 70, the answer, it always lies in Jesus. This woman, she was trying to find solutions, spend so much money, so much time and energy, disappointments, frustrations, probably cry at night, went through all of that. You know, but here, one day, she found out just like Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus was also blind, begging for 40 plus years, and when he heard about Jesus, he thought to himself, if I could only meet Jesus. So this woman also knew about Jesus going about healing any, every manner of diseases. 
and she was determined, I've spent all my money with his physicians, nothing works. But what I've heard about Jesus is he has the answer and I'm going to get it. This is the determination here in this story. So what happened? You know, we also have this story in Mark as well. It says here, so in Mark 24, so Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she heard about Jesus and she, she knew that Jesus was coming to where she was. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Can you visualize the scene? The crowd's there, Jesus is walking, and then she probably crawled between the legs of all the crowd and touched his garment. Within that crowd, you know, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. I've been looking for answer everywhere, I couldn't find it, but I didn't know until now the answer lies in Jesus. See, it only takes a minute to think about, you know, what's going on. Because we don't think, we jump on the bandwagon. Whatever people tell us, we jump on the bandwagon and go along with it. But I want you to think, pause, step back, and think carefully what the Bible says. And think carefully who Jesus is today. Not the past, today. This lady, she had the right idea, right determination. She sought everything, nothing works. But now she comes to Jesus because she does know that there is healing, there is power in the name of Jesus and there is answer in the name of Jesus. Verse 28. I just read it. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Immediately. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And you know the next verse. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him. Turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? See, it records that he was not a normal man. He is God-man, man and God together. So he did have power. Here it proves immediately his power went out and dried up the woman's blood in the body. And his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? Yeah, it's a relevant uh, question that Jesus, uh, that Jesus, the, the disciples ask. How could you say that? There's so many people around you. In Luke is recorded, somebody touch me for I perceive power going out from me. This is what Jesus said. Somebody touch me. When everyone is touching him, you know, in the crowd, he said somebody touch me because this is specific. He felt his power going out. Now the woman saw that she was not hidden. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. We can chase after the rainbow. We can go and we can, you know, run around and find help from anyone. But why don't we first, our first stop should be Jesus. Instead of running around and trying to find help, our first stop always need to be Jesus because Jesus is the answer. Not our bank managers, not our great doctors, not our social workers or care workers or whoever can help us. It's Jesus. And you know what? When we, when we talk about Jesus as the answer, I know he's not bodily here, but he puts people along our pathway to help us to achieve and accomplish what we need in our lives. Yes. But if we don't go to Jesus first, how can He arrange and organize 
for whatever we need to be achieved. So, you know, I want to encourage you, our first port of call needs to be Jesus, because He is the answer. Nobody else. And you know, and he said to her, Jesus, in verse 48 of Luke 8, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. What a wonderful testimony. What a wonderful, you know, uh, incident. Which is recorded, which is fact, by the way. So Jesus is the answer. He has everything that you need, whatever, financial, emotional, spiritual, physical, mental, every part, because He made you. Don't you think He knows you? He created you. Of course He knows you. And He came as a man to live in the world and knew what the world was like. So He knew what suffering is. Jesus knows everything. That's why he has all the answers in him for all of us. That's the present. Let's look at the future. No other gods have promised us eternal life. Because I, I, I've studied world religion and no religious book has promised us eternal life. Only the Bible. People might wonder why we need eternal life. Because a lot of people don't know that they are made as a threefold composition. Because they are composed of three, three elements. Body, soul and spirit. We have this body here that we see, which is worth two quid by the way. Just two pounds. When you die, it's worth two quid only. That even now today, I don't think it's worth that much now because people can't make a profit out of it. All the chemicals. But today, you know, if we know that our bodies that we see here is going to die and be dust again because we are made from dust and we are breathed in the spirit from God. So we are a spirit being. Body, soul and spirit. The body dies, the spirit lives on. That's why the question is where are we going to live? forever. There's only two places, Gehenna and Heaven. There's only two places. First, we've got to establish that because we are threefold composition. So, that spirit in the man's life yearns to worship something. He yearns to worship something. That's why we have so many religions, so many denominations today in the world. So, the spirit, by the way, only man is created with the spirit. No animals. People might wonder, oh, what about the spirit of animals? Have you ever seen dogs gathering together and worshipping God? No, you haven't. And you will never. Because they don't have a spirit. Man has a spirit, and that spirit needs and yearns to worship something. That's why the native, the primitive people we see, they, they have to worship. So they're worshipping a tree. They're worshipping a stone. You know, I'm trying to establish because man is made with the spirit, he needs to worship something. And we have seen that. But man is always looking for an answer. Looking for an answer. You know, but they don't know that there's eternal life, but they're looking for an answer. Where to find an answer? You know, Buddha said, oh, Nirvana, you do this, you get there. I, 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 I don't think he got there either. And there's, you know, Taoism, Hinduism, there's Islam, there's Scientology, there's New Age, etc., etc. There's so many things that man's looking for and could never find. And they're still looking for it, but they still haven't found it. Because their leaders were not God. They're just man, just like you and me. Only Jesus is God. And the world needs to know that. And one day they will. Because the time is running out. Every prophecy in the Bible has been fulfilled. Times ahead are not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just trying to tell you. And we need to stand firmer in the Word of God and in the God of the Word. That's, that's the only way we can survive in the future. 
That's why, he, because he is God, he has all the answer that the whole world is looking for, but not finding it. You see, the church has a lot of responsibility to tell the world that he is the answer. Unless people know, unless people stop for a while and think, and get into that uh, practical things from the Bible, then he won't, they won't know that Jesus is the answer. And the church has a responsibility for that. Only a few have found it. There's the only handful of people in the world today who follow Jesus. There may be millions who, who are religious, but only a handful who follow Jesus. That's the difference. You know, there, there was a kind of a census taken about Christianity in the whole world. There's about 10% probably in the world are Christian. Out of that is 4% is followers of Jesus. Most of them are religious people. Religion will not save you or give you eternal life. I can guarantee you that. Because it's man-made. It's tradition. But relationship with Jesus makes all the difference. We have the answer. And the answer is always a blessing to our lives because He will never give us what we don't need. He always gives us what we need. And that is why Jesus is the answer past, present, and future. He is the only one that can guarantee you eternal life, where your spirit, when this body dies, your spirit lives with him in heaven forever. Who in the right frame of mind want to go to hell, where you are burning 24-7, constantly, for the rest of eternity? But they want, they want to go. Some people say, well, we're going to have a party in hell. You'll be surprised. Oh, we'll have a barbecue in hell. No, you will be barbecued. So, you know, things like that, people don't think. They, they make fun of it. But reality, when reality hits, one day reality is going to hit when Jesus comes back. When the world gets worse and tribulation hits the world. Everyone, everybody's going to run to God crying out for God, running into church. That's the day. That's when G the word says, every knee will have to bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord today, yesterday, and forever. And He's the answer, past, present, and future. So church, let's not jump on the bandwagon and listen to many voices. There's only one voice you need to listen, that's Jesus and His Word. Through the Holy Spirit, nothing else. So let's keep on, on that right track. I want to tell you something, I want to encourage you, even though we are few, it doesn't matter. The authenticity is important, more important than numbers. Because sometimes you see a lot of people flocking to big church, mega churches, but can you find Jesus there? Because I've been there. I'm talking about it because I've been there. I'm not talking what I don't know. I'm talking about what I know. I'm not criticizing anything. I'm just saying, but is Jesus there? Because a lot of people are actually stuck in religion and gathering and social, everything that pleases them. The Bible talks about it. These are the times, times when people want only good things to hear. They don't want to hear about hell. They don't want to hear about certain things, hardship that you have to go through. They only want to hear good things. And when you talk about good things, you can fill a church. But that's not what the Bible is all about. The Bible is actually directing you to face bad things and accomplish and overcome them in order to get good things. That's important. So let's make sure that we hold on who has the answer. That's Jesus. And today, tomorrow, eternally, He is always the answer. Let's pray.